Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. Welcome back to another video. iOS 12.2 is out today. We have been waiting on this one for some time. Apple announced this at their pretty crazy and very different March special event today where they announced a number of new subscription services, one for games, one for TV and movies uh, and standard television channels. They also announced Apple News Plus, which is actually baked into iOS 12.2. We're gonna jump into that in just a minute. They also just released a really big iOS update, which is what iOS 12.2 is. As always, if you're excited for this deep dive, drop a like down below. It seriously helps me out and hit subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. Let's go ahead and get started. The big takeaway for iOS 12.2 is Apple News Plus. It's a new subscription service. This is the official copy from Apple that extends the Apple News experience with hundreds of magazines and top newspapers. Uh, the Wall Street Journal is included in this. A ton of really cool magazines are included as well. Basically for $9.99 a month, at least here in the US, you get access to over 300 magazines uh, and other websites that were traditionally paywalled. It sounds pretty cool. It's available right now in the US and Canada, and it's probably going to expand elsewhere later this year or into 2020. Basically, the news app has a new tab in it. When you subscribe, you get access to all this stuff. It is very different looking. I, I like the way it looks. It's pretty simple and easy to use and understand, but that is definitely a big change here. The news app has some different logos in it. It is absolutely branded. And of course, you've got a brand new icon just so that your eye is drawn to that as soon as you actually update your phone. There's also offline reading, so if you ever wanted to download a magazine, you don't have to like actually stream it, even though it's technically a streaming subscription service kind of deal, you can download it. So if you ever go in on an extended plane or journey or trip, you don't need an active internet connection to read some of your favorite stuff that you're subscribing to. So Apple News Plus is the only new subscription service that you can get involved with right now. Again, the Apple News gaming service, also the TV and movie subscription service, that is not here yet either. Apple did confirm that a new software update with the TV and movie subscription service is coming in May of 2019. So I would expect to say that we're gonna see iOS 12.3 released to you guys, to the public sometime in May. Just a little tidbit that I wanted to throw in there. Next up, if you have any device with Face ID, you get four new Animoji. Now as cool as these look, yeah, I know, the giraffe is pretty dope. I got real excited when I saw this. Also, the way the little shark wags its tail, that's cool. I guess it's Finn. It's because it doesn't have a tail. Anyway, it is pretty cool. There are four new ones now, owl, boar, giraffe, and shark. And again, they're only compatible if you have Face ID on your device. So one of the newest iPad Pros or iPhone 10, 10s, or 10R. If you have anything else, you won't get these new Animoji, but they're cool. They look nice. I just know that I, I'm never going to use them. They're fun to show off on video. They're a cool like flagship feature for an update, just not practical and really anyway. Next up, there are some AirPlay changes inside of iOS 12.2. First up, inside of Control Center, there is a brand new Apple TV remote sort of app thing in here. So it's been redesigned. It's going to work with smart TVs, I believe, and also, of course, Apple TVs. That is the main primary use here. I like the redesign a lot. I think it's a lot more straightforward, a lot more clear, transparent, easy to use and understand, which is always what Apple's Whole, whole deal is they wanna make things easy. There's also AirPlay multitasking, which is a really cool idea. Basically, if you are AirPlaying something over video and then you wanna switch an app, maybe you're playing something from the TV app, the Apple TV app, and then you wanna go and check Twitter. It's not going to stop that audio like it did in the past. You don't have to stay on the app that you're AirPlaying from your phone, you can just Go ahead and airplay it and then resume whatever you're doing if you want to multitask in some way. Also, airplay destinations are now grouped by content type, making it faster for you to find what device you want to play to, and that is straight from the change log. Following that is support for second generation AirPods. Uh, you may have seen last week that new AirPods came out. It was a pretty big deal. If you get second generation AirPods for them to work in general or at least to work properly, you gotta get on iOS 12.2. So definitely go ahead and update if you have someone to order or you're planning to update to second generation AirPods in the near future so you get all of the latest features and changes. There were also some changes to Apple Pay in iOS 12.2, namely there's some insanely good looking new animations inside of the app and some general UI aesthetic changes. This looks so good. Not that Apple Pay interface was confusing in really any way before. It just looks a lot cleaner. It looks a lot sharper. And that's because this is all in preparation 
for honestly the only Apple hardware that we saw today, but something that's pretty dope, a new Apple Card. This is an extension of the Apple Pay app. When it launches, you're gonna be able to get 3% cash back on any Apple products you buy using the card, 2% on any Apple Pay transaction, and 1% if you use the physical card. And guys, the physical card is made of titanium. I don't know how Apple's gonna get away with offering these for free. I feel like you're going to have to literally buy the card because it's titanium and not plastic, but the entire credit card sounds too good to be true. Apparently, no late fees. Everything's laid out for you in the structure. They respect your privacy. They don't share anything with Goldman Sachs, who is actually going to be the bank in charge or, or namely behind the card. MasterCard's not gonna get any of your data. And this is why the Apple Pay app looks different. So there aren't any huge changes now. That'll be coming with the Apple Card very soon. I believe that's launching this summer. But for now, you do get a refreshed Apple Pay app or, or wallet app, I should say, and it looks really nice. While we're here, before moving on to other changes present right now inside of iOS 12.2, Apple has announced a gaming subscription service as well called Apple Arcade. The name is great. The branding is super fresh. It looks really dope. There's going to be new and exclusive games that you can get through the subscription service, but Apple's being really ambiguous here. They have not announced pricing. They say it is coming later in 2019, so we have a lot more to learn about it, but could Apple re Event gaming with this. So let me hear your thoughts and feelings about the event, iOS 12.2, and Apple's new subscription services down in the comments below. Jumping over to Safari now, if you automatically sign in using password autofill, you're not going to have to tap anything anymore. It should sign in automatically, which is dope. You're gonna get fresh warnings if you're loading an unencrypted web page. There's been some changes to how the do not track option works. It's now been rolled into another feature called intelligent tracking prevention. So if you're looking for that feature or option, and settings, it's just been rolled into something else. And here's one other tidbit that you'll probably find really useful. Whenever you're Googling or searching something in Safari now, little blue arrows pop up next to popular searches. So if you don't wanna automatically Google that but want that key phrase or whatever to build on top of, if you tap the blue arrow, it's going to put all of that in the search bar and then you can add additional queries or words after it or before it. You can modify it rather than just only being able to search for automatically suggested results. Heading over to Apple Music now, if you are a subscriber to this, inside of the Browse tab, it has been rearranged, redesigned for an emphasis on more editorial content. So I, it's okay, I'm not a huge fan of this change. If you wanna get into top charts, for example, you now have to scroll down a lot. I really like that that was at the top, but now in Apple Music, to browse, you have to go to browse and then scroll down quite a bit to get to your genres, moods, top charts, or music videos. There are also a wide variety of smaller changes in this update as well. So iOS 12.2 supports air quality index in maps for United States, United Kingdom, and India. It includes information and settings on how much time remains on your device's warranty period. I know I'll be taking advantage of that if I have a question about something with my phone not working properly. It supports real-time text for phone calls made through a nearby iPhone on iPhone iPad and iPod Touch. This is a stupid one. Displays a 5G e icon for some devices if you're on AT&T's 5G Evolution Network. I don't know why Apple's supporting this. It's a big gimmick. They're getting sued for it. It's not 5G. It's just 4G LTE still, and that's a, that's a whole nother debacle. Uh, this one's really nice. It improves the quality of audio recordings and messages. It is a much, much higher quality. Um, I'll try to do a comparison. This is what a voice message on the old iMessage sounds like. And this is what a voice message on iOS 12.2 Beta 5 sounds like. But it really is, again, like a night and day change here. Anyone could tell that iOS 12.2 sounds so much better for audio recordings. It's how it always should have sounded. On the Apple TV remote and iOS, there is improved stability and performance, which you know is good because it was kind of in a bad spot earlier. iOS 12.2 fixes an issue that prevented some missed calls from appearing in Notification Center, addresses an issue where a badge notification could appear on settings, even though no action is needed. I've had that happen before, and I drove myself crazy for five, 10 minutes looking through the settings app, unable to find where the badge was coming from. The update also addresses an issue in settings general and iPhone storage, where the storage size of some large apps, the system category, and other other category in the storage bar graph could be incorrect. Always nice to have accurate reporting there. iOS 12.2 fixes an issue that could cause voice memos to automatically play back recordings after connecting to a car, Bluetooth device, and resolves an issue 
issue that could cause voice memos to temporarily prevent renaming a recording. Additionally, there are some security updates as well. So per usual, if you wanna be on the safest version of iOS that we know of right now, you wanna be on the latest version. You could stay on an older version if for some reason you're hesitant to upgrade, but I've been beta testing this for months now and it's been really good. There have been no major bugs or glitches that I would say would prevent anyone or should prevent anybody from updating. So today in iOS 12.2, there are actually a lot of big changes and updates. Let me know which ones you like the most down below. All right, guys, so that is iOS 12.2, a major update that just dropped today, available for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. If you enjoyed the video, as always, helps me out if you drop a like. Hit subscribe so you stay up to date. I've been Sam, hope you're doing great, and I will catch you in my next Apple update video.